Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Happy to have you here. I'm coming back from being horribly sick for a week and then taking a week to recuperate, but we're getting this ball rolling again. Uh, this is actually part two of the uh, T6 Jedi shuttle videos that I was doing. The first one we did was just the uh, T6. Uh, the one we're doing today is the newer version, which is the Ahsoka Tano's T6 Jedi Shuttle. This is set number 75362. Uh, it came out earlier this year in 2023 in the uh, most recent Star Wars wave. Uh, this retails for $80. Um, I actually picked it up a little bit ago at Costco for 50 because for some reason they just had it for sale for 50 bucks. Uh, they currently, if you can find it there, have it for 65. Um, that's actually a really good place to find Lego sets uh, for 15 to 20 dollars less than retail is at Costco. Not a sponsor, but if you've got a Costco membership, I highly recommend checking them out. Um, it's usually the few months leading up to Christmas and, you know, big time of year for Lego sets. I found that the other half of the year kind of isn't anything there. Um, but you can find some really good stuff. Um, I think currently they're doing the UCS, um, Razor Crest for 500. So that's actually a pretty darn good deal. Um, but let's get back to the T6s. So in this video, we're going to be focusing on the design of this guy over here, and then we're going to get comparing them together, um, see what kind of things they've changed. I mean, obviously it's a fully different uh, design here, as you can see. Um, but we're going to start off with the minifigures. The uh, set is called Ahsoka Tano's T6 Jedi Shuttle, after all, and it wouldn't be her shuttle without her. So here is adult Ahsoka Tano. Uh, really well done. Really nice print. And I do believe this is the first time we've gotten her in an official set with her white blades. So they use uh, just trans clear here. It's a very good, very good figure. Very detailed. You got arm printing and everything, back printing. It's very nice. They've been doing a really good job with the Ahsoka minifigures. Uh, this is exclusive to this set because it's the newest version of her. Then the first printing of Professor Hu Yang we've ever had. It's very nice. Then they also have back printing under there, even though he's got a backpack. Um, it's something they do. Uh, this backpack is supposed to represent the uh, like the two extra arms he has on there. And uh, it's pretty interesting. He's, he's a 25,000-year-old droid, and he's a very good character. He's voiced by David Tennant in the show, if you didn't know that, uh, which I hadn't until I looked up some stuff a little while ago. And then we have uh, Maroc, the Inquisitor, who we kind of know nothing about. Um, this is actually the first time I've gotten... Uh, that Inquisitor piece. I don't know if I actually have any other Inquisitors. I think this is the first one I've gotten, but he's got, you know, the Inquisitor shoulder pads here. Uh, kind of really rusty armor. They did a good job on getting these details here. Uh, brand new helmet. Uh, and then we get, he's also exclusive to this set. Uh, then we also have a brand new Sabine Wren, who thankfully actually comes with a helmet. Uh, if you know anything about Sabine and the Rebel sets, uh, previously the only way to get her with the helmet was the uh, Gazanti Cruiser set, which was, I want to say, about 140, 130 or 140, and that was the only way to get Sabine's helmet. Um, of course, it was different armor design then, but... It was kind of locked behind a paywall, which made that helmet piece pretty darn expensive. Um, I'll take off her helmet so you can see her face. It's double-sided. Comes with her hair piece. Get that on there. She's got a purple hair. 
comes with a second blaster because she does sometimes dual wield in the show. These are pretty good figures overall. They're all very detailed, which is kind of their their thing these days, which I'm very happy with. Like if you compare those ones to these guys, these all have leg printing, back printing. These guys don't. These are from 2011. So, you know, in 11, 12 years, they've really made a lot of strides towards getting these figures a lot more detailed. Um, let me check Maroc real quick. I don't think he has it. Yeah, no, he's just black because we never see his face actually in the show. So didn't make any sense to give him a face there. Um, overall, really good figures. Um, they all run about eight to 12 bucks. They're pretty new. They're kind of easy to find. Um, so the secondary market isn't very high for those. Um, I don't know if I mentioned, but the set has 599 pieces. Um, and let's get into the shuttle itself. So as you can see, shuttle is, I would say, I don't know, maybe 20% smaller. It's, it's not really accurate to show you like that. Um, but it is, it is a smaller set. But with that, you do get a lot more detail in it. Uh, has a different color. It is very accurate to the show. Come on, guys. Stand up. There we go. Thank you. Um, it is more detailed. You actually get the red going all the way across instead of just terminated with white there. Uh, they incorporate that into the sticker here. They have that angle piece there to fit in there. Um, I didn't line these up very well, so there's a big gap there. But if you if you line them down a little bit, they fit really well. Um, again, underneath, they they basically did nothing down here. Like it, it wouldn't have hurt them to just add a couple detail parts down here because with the other one, this moves, and so half the time you're gonna have it like that. And then the other side is just blank. So, like, I I do understand why they do that, because it is just a playset. It's not, like, the UCS. Like, if this, if they made a UCS version of this, then yes, they would probably do that. But, oh, pardon me. It's not that big of a deal, but it just, it does feel a little incomplete to me. It's, it's more of a sit on your desk and kind of look at it from the top kind of thing. Um, you have a lot more streamlined top here. Uh, you get your hatches there, which are also stickers. There's only a couple stickers here. You get the two here, the two there, and that. Oh, you've got it one here and one on the other side. So there's only about six stickers on here, which isn't too bad. Um, I wish they had more printed pieces. But for a, set, for a set this side, they wouldn't have really done that. Um, it's actually a bit more stable than the other one. Um, and that's because you've got this landing gear here, which is actually really nice. They fold out. You can see that there. They're on a hinge here. So in flight, you got that. And then when you're landing, they fold out like this and you get... A T, which is a lot more stable than the other one, where it was just that Technic foldout. I really appreciate that. Um, building this, you actually see it's only a single stud here in the center. So you've got the the you know studs on the side, and then building downwards with the single thing here, and you've got some posts here. And it's a really interesting building technique because they're um, they're actually starting to use like studs that are hollow and then putting those into like the bottoms here in those centers um and it's it's a bit of a more advanced technique a lot of people use them in their mocks and i appreciate that they're actually trying to incorporate that um that building technique 
because it's something that they've been able to do for a long time. Um, but they're actually officially putting them into sets. And I do appreciate that the designers are, are seeing these as legitimate building techniques. Um, you can see there's not as much gap around here. It's very nice. It's, it's very evenly spaced for the most part. That was a big issue with the other one. It's kind of bulky and blocky and there's really big gaps. Um, but here it's a lot more streamlined because, you know, they've got time between then and now to kind of refine their design. You don't have the colored edge on the side here, but you do have like indentions. So you can kind of get that as kind of a design feature. Um, they actually covered this section here with tiling instead of just leaving it as a block, which I appreciate. Um, you've got some features here with these panels open up. Here you've got a little removable, like, I don't know, like maintenance thing. You can set that back in there. Uh, it's, it's all tiled in there except for where that attaches to, which I do appreciate. It's very nice in there. On this side, you've got a spot for Sabine's blasters and stuff and her hair. That's usually where I put that. I do believe it might be in the instructions to have it in there, but fits those in there pretty nice. Um, you can't really put any figures in here because it's, it's too small, uh, but it's nice angle there. Um, just like the other one, you've got the rotating wings. These are a lot, I don't want to say loose, but it doesn't have really any resistance. It kind of just goes on its own and kind of just really able to spin. I wish it was a little more firm so that it would be able to stay in its position easier. Um, but it's not quite as thick as the other one. You got this much larger apparatus here. You can see it's it's much thicker, whereas opposed to here, it is smaller. So they've gotten that kind of more streamlined. I do appreciate the advancement on that part. Uh, the cockpits, obviously much bigger. You're able to fit multiple figures in this one. Whereas this one, you can only fit one in. But it is hinged which is very nice. And the inside is nice and smooth. You're able to fit one character in there. You've got a control panel in there actually mounted like it should be, as opposed to the other one where it's just in the floor. There are no gaps here, which is very nice. It's a very, I mean, you've got this slight one down here, but it's a very nicely contained and designed cockpit. It's very good. Uh, they actually build from several different angles. They just go around and on their bottom. It's, it's all very smoothly contained. It's very nice. Um, what else? Um, I talked about in the last one how they've got the stud shooters incorporated in the engines. It's very hidden. Well, here they've got them up here in the front. And it's very obvious that they're there, but they're not like just tacked on the top and kind of there. They're incorporated into the design, which I'm okay with. Uh, like I said in the last video, it is a playset. They've got to have, you know, play features for kids. And I do appreciate how they're incorporating these stud shooters a bit more inconspicuously. A um, lot of details on the side here. Like the last one, it was just this, that smooth curve. There's not really any greebling or anything, but here you've got nice smooth panels, yet I believe these might be rear blasters. I'm not sure. I know they use this turret, but I'm not sure about those. Um, really nice. You even have details up here. Um, this panel is on 
kind of precariously, but it, it sits in there and it, it fills that area pretty nicely. It's, it, it is well designed. It is very aesthetically pleasing. I, I will give them that. Uh, they, they added a, a rear turret and the engines, and there's no like big gaps going through here like the last one with the engines are. Um, overall, definitely uh, an upgrade from the design. There are still, you know, some same inherent issues with it being a play test and not not really that much of like a display piece per se. It is a play set, but it is very well designed. It's stable comparatively. The figures are fantastic. And they did a really good job of capturing the look from the show. Uh, I do appreciate that. Um, the designs have come a long way. Um, let's go to more of like a numbers comparison here. So this came out 2011. It was 389 pieces and retailed for $60. You came with four characters here, four minifigures. This one came out this year. It has 599 pieces, retails for $80, and has the same number of characters. Um, it has more pieces, but that's simply because they're more small pieces. It retails for $20 more than that did. And that's basically chalked up to just inflation, the increase of Legos in general. Um, it's been 12 years. It's to be expected. Um, the figures, a lot more detailed, because that's what they've been doing um, with pretty much all of their figures. They've been doing leg printing and arm printing and back printing. They've really advanced the process of making these figures as detailed as they can. Um, the figures themselves uh, mostly cost less, but that's simply because they're newer. Uh, they're a lot easier to get. These ones are older. Can't get them. Like, um, Shakti only came in this set. And there is a possibility we're going to see these three, at least. I mean, if you've seen the show, we're probably never going to get that guy again. Don't want to spoil it for you, but uh, it's probably the only set he'll come in. Um, overall... I am very pleased with this set. Um, I think 80 bucks is a little much. I think maybe 70 would be the most it should be. Um, the 65 that Costco has it for is a fantastic price. Like I wish it was 65 normally. Um, but with four minifigures, I don't, I don't really see it ever being or any set in general. With four figures, I don't really see it being 65 um that's sort of just a thing the more figures a set has typically the more expensive it is uh like if if it's 10 cents per piece it's usually about 10 bucks per figure uh on the price as far as i've seen um but you know this having been 60 dollars, having that at 65 would have been kind of uh pushing it a little bit so I do think it should have been like 70, maybe 75. Um, I got it for 50, which is an amazing amount. I, I didn't actually know it retailed for $80 when I got it. I thought it retailed for 65. Um, but no, everywhere else I'd go to, it's at 80. I was like, wait, what? So yeah, um, Costco, again, not a sponsor, but a great place to save some money. And I do know that if you buy it through um, the Lego website, you do get points you get uh you get points if you're a vip member and yes i i believe it's you spend a thousand dollars you save you, you're able to redeem enough points for like 50 bucks but on the same note if you buy a thousand dollars worth of lego at costco and it's twenty dollars off well you've saved a hundred dollars so honestly it's it's better just to go to costco and that saving 
adds up like the more you buy if you buy even more than that um and it's like a 60 dollar membership fee so you're kind of breaking even if you only get the same amount but if you buy more you can get more back i don't know it it, it just feels more uh for me it feels better to just know that i'm getting that discount off the top um they're they're good sets they're good sets this has its place you know nostalgia and you're i feel like this is built more for like putting your guys in and playing and it is built not built designed for the clone wars series like that's a lot more cartoony and more kid stuff and this one is more uh more detailed and it's from the ahsoka show there's a lot of people that watched the clone wars series are now older it's been like 10 years so we're more adults and we like the more display stuff. And I do appreciate how how much detail they've been able to incorporate in stuff and more design aspects. Because it wasn't even just on the bottom, it was also on the top here where they do the the one stud and then they've got the details on the side attached to it and it makes that really nice smooth thing. Um, overall, very pleased with this set. And uh, it's out in stores now, so if you want to pick it up, go for it. Um, you got some really good figures here. Um, yeah, I don't think there's really much else to say about these guys. Uh, anyway, thank you for watching. It's always nice to have you guys here, and I'll see you on the next one. Uh, also, if this comes out today when I'm filming it, happy Halloween, everybody. Bye-bye.